Hello, you beautiful people. Good morning. So today we are on our way to, well, soon we'll be on our way to Chester Zoo. We're going to be checking out the animals, having a look at the new social distancing procedures, and just generally having a nice day out. It's been about a year since I was last at Chester Zoo, so I'm very excited to go today. So I'm going to take you guys with us. So yeah, come with, enjoy a day at the zoo, looking at all the lovely animals. Let's head to Chester Zoo. So we're here, we just arrived at Chester Zoo, just parked up, um, pretty quiet this morning, it's about 10 minutes before the place opens, um, so yeah, nice and easy, lots of staff around, so we'll head in and uh, see how the entrance procedures go. So as we approach the entrance, um, signage was actually very clear. Uh, very very clear everywhere and these two stay two meter signs that you can see here with the hand sanitizer on were everywhere like everywhere around the park so there was definitely no shortage of uh, hand sanitizer all the toilets had queue lines and staff manning them like this one here every single one had at least one member of staff uh, and around the entrance area had all these uh, markers laid out on the floor. It was pretty quiet when we joined, so it was pretty easy through. Uh, it was self-service to get you in to the scanner, so you scan your own barcode, and the staff basically just say, yeah, fine, come on in. And again, more of the stay two metres apart signage. It was literally everywhere. So initially, when we first got into the park, this was sort of the crowd level. Uh, as long, The longer the day went on, the busier it did get. Uh, towards the end, we were there till about two o'clock. So really, we had about four or five hours there. It did get a little bit busy towards the end. Uh, I think that's because they do sell an afternoon ticket, which I think starts around two o'clock. So that could have explained why it got a bit busier. Uh, most of the enclosures have this kind of setup. So a yellow line on the floor, which shows you where you shouldn't stand. And the signage also says, don't touch the glass. Uh, to try and keep people away from the, any area where uh, guests might touch so the glass and the fences and that kind of stuff uh, so basically signs everywhere saying please remain behind the, behind the yellow line uh, most people did follow this uh, obviously keeping kids under control and stuff is going to be the hard part of this uh, but a lot of that comes down to the parents and them doing their bit for society So over at the Painted Dogs, it was actually really interesting to know, and this was the first place we saw this, um, some of the uh, indoor areas are actually open. So some of the areas that you have to go through, which make up part of the pathways, um, they have opened the indoor areas. Uh, one of those, like I said, being the Painted Dogs uh, enclosure. All of these areas that are technically indoors um, did have a member of staff stood in there with you, um, just making sure people didn't linger too long and they were following the rules. Uh, and mainly just making sure everyone was staying separate. Did give you some really good views inside though, as you can see here. Uh, but again, all the signage was in place uh, and also had the lines on the floor telling you to, to sort of stand back a certain distance. Over 
Over at Island, which was the new area a couple of years ago, uh, it was quite evident they're not planning to open the boat ride anytime soon, as you can see them all here, just sort of stored in the lake. Uh, and also interesting to note, the, the lake itself was drained, and it looked like some work was going on. The cable that actually runs that system um, wasn't connected to most of the uh, most of the, the, the underwater system itself, as you'll see from some of the shots here. Uh, a lot of de-weeding needs doing before that thing can reopen. Uh, but we knew beforehand that it uh, that it was going to be closed. Uh, but yeah, this section did have the the cable still connected, but other sections it was no longer connected to the uh, the actual um, pulley system, which was interesting to see. So there's obviously some work going on with that. The rainforest area within um, within islands, which did have uh, the unfortunate fire in 2018, is still closed. Um, we could see work still going on there. Um, in fact, there was actually quite a lot of work going on around the zoo. Um, loads of new enclosures popping up, and actually new stuff since we've last been. And I mean, it's been over a year since I was last there, so it's great to see that they are still are still putting in new stuff and continuing on that development given the circumstances. Again, a few more examples of the um, yellow lines, which were in all the enclosures, especially in this area where it was a little bit more sheltered, um, technically an indoor area. Uh, this pathway gives us a good example of how the thinner paths will have or do have a one-way system and um, so they always ask people to stay to the left so people can pass on the other side again most people did stick to this um, but during busier times i can see it getting a little bit tight especially when you get people lingering to watch the animals uh, people with prams and that sort of thing there were certain areas it did start to feel a little bit too tight for me towards the end um, but yeah, generally the first hour or so, I'd say it wasn't too bad. So my advice, if you're feeling like you don't really want to bump into people, get there early. We got there, like I say, about quarter to ten, and it was pretty quiet for about the first hour. Here was one of the food outlets, just to give you an idea of the queue. Pretty much everyone we saw did have a queue to it. And here at the Giant Otters, this is what I mean about the crowds. It was pretty busy in certain areas. So you might want to stay clear. Um, I did. I st stood sort of at the back uh, and observed a lot of the a lot of the bits and pieces, and I felt safe. Uh, and if you want to venture into the sort of more crowded areas, you can do. A good example of that actually will be in a second when I show you um, the viewing underwater viewing area for the penguins. Uh, it was a little bit too busy for me, but some people were down there. And fair play to you if you want to go and have a look at them and get get mingling, get close to people fair play i thought i'd just stand back here on the top of the hill and just observe and it wasn't too bad this wasn't the most crowded area we came across but it was a little bit too crowded for me another area where it was quite busy right at the, uh, the the sort of fence was here at the um i think these was the red pandas again not too bad um but it just gives you indication that there were quite a lot of people in the park but again, you can see all the markers on the floor and the hand sanitizer literally everywhere. And another quick look here at one of the enclosures. This was the giraffes. Again, you can see it's quite busy, but people were keeping generally to the two meters apart. Um, so yeah, all in all, I did feel relatively safe throughout the day. Would I recommend, recommend a visit? Absolutely. If you want to come to a zoo, come and do it. Um, my advice, come earlier rather than later as you'll feel a lot safer. But, gem but really, it was a brilliant day. And we're probably going to go back again soon. So that's going to do us for our little look around Chester Zoo today. Thank you for watching. See you all real soon.